What's up, guys? I uh, hope you're ready for uh, a look at what sold today. Uh, had a really good weekend. I uh, sold 16 items. I know that's not a lot compared to some resellers, but for me, it was pretty exciting. Um, I've got a couple of really good items going out, one in particular that uh, I was glad to see go that I had just listed a couple days ago. I uh, got some good money for. Uh, so I'm excited to show that to you. I'll save it till the end. And uh, this will be kind of like a part two. Part two if you will, of uh, this this what sold. I had a couple of items from a, a couple of days before the week. I think I shipped out on Thursday uh, that I filmed. It was just a couple of quick ones. I think it was three things was all that day. Uh, so it was really kind of slow that day, but I'm gonna add those to the video. I may start with those at the beginning and then switch to uh, the items that sold over this weekend when it was a lot busier. Uh, I'm glad to see that happening. Uh, I'm glad to see the uptick in sales I'm excited for how it's going to continue to grow uh, over the coming months. So we're going to get started with a fedora. Uh, this is like a Heather Gray. It is a vintage item. This is Dobbs Fifth Avenue. Uh, it was a really uh, uh, interesting find at a local thrift store. I believe I gave $2.99 for it. It wasn't very much and it sold for $33. Uh, so let's go grab that. So we are in the office room with the eBay storage. Um, and right here we have the fedora i was talking about this again is uh dobbs fifth avenue you can kind of see that maybe so really nice made in usa pure wool felt wool felt's always a you know anything that's 100 percent wool pretty much in any item is always uh, good to at least check uh not everything i guess that's wool is always going to be like a bolo um, but definitely things that are made of wool, silk, those types of materials, you want to check those out. You never know when you're going to have a good find. Okay. All right. The next item is a bread baker. All right. So it's down here on this bottom shelf. Sit down here. Let's slide this out. It's kind of a heavy item. It's really clean. Probably wasn't used more than one time. Um, going to show you the bottom so this is called Superstone by sassafras again this is vintage 1991 there's your model number 1625 uh, very nice bakeware found this at a thrift store it's a decent drive from here um, I make a trip ever so often to Birmingham uh, the Birmingham area that was actually an alabaster um, <clears throat> but uh, that particular store usually has uh, some pretty nice items usually get some interesting things that I don't find necessarily at other locations or other places uh, closer to home so all right and one more item back here <clears throat> so we're going back to uh, the media box with uh, the Pokemon games this time except this time all we need is a booklet so this is back to uh, our big buyout of nintendo 64 and game boy gear so i'm hunting an instruction manual there we go it's pokemon stadium 2 um so anytime you find anything with uh, Pokemon from uh, the 90s, you've pretty much got a good item. Um, this is, uh, again, for the Nintendo 64. It is a, an instruction manual. Um, so this manual alone sold for $24.99. And by the way, the Bread Baker sold for $35. Now the Bread Baker, I gave $7.99 for it. Uh, the Pokemon manual, like I said, this is in a really large bulk buy. Uh, lots and lots of games, consoles, uh, and all kinds of accessories. Uh, but I got, you know, I said $25 for this. Gave $800 for the whole bundle. All right, so you notice I'm wearing my Alabama hat today, or one of many that I have. I uh, had to represent the Tide. Uh, rough weekend. Uh, that loss to Texas kind of hurt. Uh, Texas certainly came ready to play. Uh, but there's a lot of games left in the season, so who knows how it's going to turn out. Uh, but we definitely have... Uh, uh, time to get better and, and need to get better uh, if we're going to have a, a competitive season like we're used to. Uh, so let's begin pulling some items. Um, I'm going to start by, we'll, we'll walk back here to the office. 
uh, where I have the extra uh, listed items uh, stored. And uh, we'll start there pulling some stuff to get past. Right, so the first item that I've got to pull is a Aftco or an Aftco uh, hat. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, that's American Fish and Tackle Company. It's a really good brand, uh, whether it is their shirts, their shorts. Shorts are really popular. Uh, but in this case, it's, it's a cap. But this is a, a, a special cap. Uh, it is made for fishing. It zips around the back. It's got a long uh, protector for the neck. Uh, it's vented at the top. You kind of see here it's heavy um it's got the pull cord to keep it snug on your head so this is this is made for long days on the water it's kind of a cool hat i really uh thought it was uh interesting when i got it uh i'm one of those people who burn easily so i understand the value of keeping the the neck shaded y'all uh we'll probably be seeing in an upcoming video uh, about my mom's uh little house that we're building her uh me wearing a a wide brimmed hat that's you know not real stylish but uh nevertheless it keeps my ears protected all right so this next item is part of a group of calendars that i bought from local salvation army i bought these probably you know, over a year ago maybe a year and a half ago uh they were still in you know as far as the, the date of them because these are really for last year uh they were good when i got them there were star wars calendars rick and morty different ones that i thought had a chance to do well peanuts uh, I was getting them for a quarter, and so I wasn't trying to make a killing off of them. I figured at a quarter apiece, um, if I could sell them for 3 or $4, then I'd be doing pretty good. But as it turns out, uh, they didn't sell so great. So I'm stuck with quite a few of them. I, I sold two or three, enough to get my money back, and then I had a random uh, offer for one of the Rick and Mortys. Hopefully over time, I'm not going to hold these forever, but hopefully over time, and you see the Rick and Morty one, Don't Swim. So I was just going to try to sell them for about what they would cost in the store at the time that I got them, uh, when they were still more relevant. And, uh, you know, that way people who, you know, maybe liked Rick and Morty or Star Wars or whatever it might be, uh, you know, for not having to go to Walmart to pick one up, they could get a, a wall calendar. But uh, hopefully the collectability wise, because of the artwork in them, they will continue to have at least a little bit of relevance. Um, didn't get a lot for that. Uh, the AFCO hat, I believe, was uh, 15 Yeah, $15. I gave three for it. And then, like I said, these calendars, I gave a quarter. And this sold really cheap, guys. I just took the offer. I um, only had them listed, I think, now for $2.99. Um, just trying to get a couple more of them out to get some profit out of it before I yard sell them or throw them away or whatever I do. But offered $1.55. I'm not going to be out anything. It's just going to be more trouble packing it, though, than it's worth, honestly. Uh, probably should just take the listing down all right the next item is a uh, media this is a dvd of of captain america the winter soldier but it's the 4k ultra so if you don't know this uh of course with each generation there was a time blu-rays were a lot more valuable on resale market and, and some are you know there's rare uh copies of dvds of all sorts uh whether it's a series or a movie uh, there's things that there's just not a lot out there of. You can watch lots of informative uh, YouTube videos from resellers uh, detailing what to look for when it comes to DVDs. What, what I found is that 4K Ultra DVDs are, overall are still a very good resale item. And so they don't sell for huge money, but when you can get them for a dollar or two, uh, you can do pretty good. So it's here in this media box. All right, so getting that back on the shelf and right there is the DVD we were talking about. Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Uh, again, this is the 4K Ultra version of the DVD, so nice sell there. Um, for that one, I think I'd given $3 for that at uh, the Goodwill, and I sold it for 12 So, you know, I, I'll make a pretty decent profit on it. And again, these aren't big dollar items, uh, but, you know, if you can sell enough of these where you make 6 8 nine dollars you know i mean it, it adds up all right so we're back in the main area uh, a quick note uh, a question i guess maybe or, or comment you know my experience in the past has been when i when i've worked a public job as a teacher i've always uh, done my own taxes and, and i've never had a problem uh matter of fact the only time i ever had an issue was this last year uh when i filed and, and it was my fault uh i've used a tax act for oh lord 20 years i guess and uh are right there at it and um i i just got complacent they, they always send a message back after you file your your federal and state return saying that they have been received 
and then you get a follow-up message that lets you know that they've been accepted. Um, well, I have never had an issue. Not one time have I had to resubmit or do anything uh, in regards to my taxes. And so this last year when I got the message, the first email that they'd been received, you know, I, I thought, well, great, you know, within another 24 hours or so to 48, I should know that they've been uh, approved or accepted. I think with doing eBay now, because so many messages, I, I need to separate the email accounts. So many messages as I list things on eBay and get questions go to that same inbox that sometimes a new message that's important gets buried and just slides down the list. And then I, I just don't go all the way through and end up and I end up missing stuff. And so I got a message uh, back uh, like a day later that said my federal return had been rejected and I had to make a revision and resubmit. I never saw it. Uh, I didn't wait till the very last minute to file, but I mean, when I filed as far as the, the standard deadline, I probably had about two weeks left and uh, I never saw it. So when I was filling out taxes for this last year, um, I went in and, and when I was trying to move the information over, I noticed that things didn't look just right. So I combed back through the emails and I found that email and, and I felt like an idiot, of course, but uh, realized that, you know, well, I technically never filed my taxes, you know, for uh, for that uh, calendar year for 2021. And so I ended up having to pay penalties and stuff. It was the only year also that I've ever owed any money on taxes. And it wasn't a bunch. I think it was like $500 or something like that that we owed or $600. But it's the first time ever that I'd actually had to pay any taxes. Uh, but then, and I had, I, I'd even processed the payment, but the payment was held until the return was approved. Everything was set up and it was supposed to go through once the return was approved. But since the return wasn't approved, the taxes didn't get paid. So then here I was owing back taxes, penalties, all interest on the, the back taxes, all this stuff. And it wound up being like $1,200. It was, it was crazy. It really bothered me uh, because it's just not my character or the way that I normally operate. Now, I'm not trying to give too much personal information. I, I just, I guess my, my, my question is this to those of you out there that are watching and other resellers in particular, if you're watching, um, how do you approach taxes? I, I know there's some accounting apps that some of you have mentioned in videos uh, that, that could be used, uh, but uh, I've also considered maybe going to a local accountant and just setting up a relationship with one of them uh, where I can kind of get things straightened out and, and know that I'm handling things properly and make sure that things don't get overlooked or messed up. Uh, I feel like overall I'm very meticulous and I do a pretty good job of keeping up with those things uh, and doing it accurately and being able to back it up I and mean, save receipts and all that kind of stuff. Um, I keep up my miles well. I mean, there's all kinds of ways I know to track uh, things that will be uh, write-offs and, and, and things like that. Uh, but any advice? I mean, what, what do y'all think? Uh, please drop a comment. I'd love to hear back uh, just, just kind of where you think, you know, I should go or what you think I should do in regards to taxes in the future. All right. So let's pull some more items. Actually, I think I'm going to grab a few of these clothing items out right quick so that I can go through them right, quicker. So, uh, I right. got those items uh, pulled, some of the clothing items out uh, to save that, that struggle of, of you having to watch me try to find the stuff. Because uh, so, uh, so much to pull for me uh, in a short amount of time today. I've got errands to run. i got to make it to... Uh, to town and, and go to the pharmacy and, and do different things, the bank. So I had to speed up a little bit. But anyway, uh, this next item uh, is a Carhartt. Um, it is a Carhartt uh, thermal top. It's waffle knit. Uh, it is long sleeve. It's a large size. Of course, Carhartt's just a good brand in general. It doesn't sell for huge money. I mean, you know, the right pieces will. I sold a vintage Carhartt jacket for $200 uh, and shipped overseas uh, just, a, I guess, about a, two months ago. Uh, that I'd picked up. It was an old Detroit model, uh, Union made, uh, with the blanket lining. It was this really awesome jacket. It was, was kind of wore, had some holes, but just great vintage look. Uh, anyhow, this waffle knit uh, Carhartt, I, I got it for $2.50. I sold it for $15. So a decent profit on that one. Uh, this next item is a pair of Chico's. Uh, these are Chico's. This is a women's brand. Uh, Kind of a boutique, special order type brand in a sense. Uh, but these are trouser pants, trouser jeans. They're wide leg at the bottom. 
so you know made to look kind of like a dress uh blue jean so these sell pretty good uh chico stuff i found is a pretty good item i mean they don't sell for like gigantic you know amounts of money but the sell through is really good especially on larger sizes as it is with most items and so uh these chico's uh trousers uh i gave four dollars for these and i sold them for 17.50 um you know that should give me easily you know 10 bucks of profit so more than doubling my money almost probably tripling my money uh this next item not really my cup of tea but uh definitely popular this is uh, a slash t-shirt uh but anyhow uh really nice shirt um good shape uh this t-shirt i only gave i think it was three dollars for this t-shirt and i sold this for 12. next item i've never seen these before I, I really thought when i when i picked these up i got these at the america's thrift store here in in alabama i don't buy as much from there especially clothing items because they price their stuff up pretty bad um, but I, I'd never seen these and, and I really thought they would do better than what they did. I was kind of surprised, honestly. Uh, anyway, these are Winchester blue jeans and you know, they're like intentionally, uh, busted war patch, that kind of thing. You see the stitching here on the tag, the holes, but definitely not the value that I thought they would have. I, I normally always, you know, look things up if it's something I'm unfamiliar with, but I thought those had to be a winner. I didn't lose any money on these. Uh, just not the kind of money maker I'd hoped for. I gave six bucks for them and I uh, only got 16. Should have doubled my money on that, I think. Or at least, well, I guess technically not. Well, yeah, I mean, I got my money back plus at least six bucks. So uh, this next item is a women's belt. This is a fossil uh, belt. Very simple. I mean, there's nothing uh, crazy or, you know, really sets this apart. Uh, it's just a basic belt. It does have some metal around the uh, holes for the uh, pin on the belt loop. Um, but this uh, particular belt, I I, I kind of stumbled into belts um, as far as being an item that I look at and, and pay attention to. Uh, I had never bought any belts, and then I was in a Goodwill uh, locally here, I guess, about a year, maybe a little less than a year ago. And uh, I was walking by one of the end caps off of the clothing and saw some belts hanging. A couple of them looked really cool, you know, like Western style belts. And I wound up picking up a couple of them. And uh, I had tried to look one up and was having trouble getting exact comps. But come to find out, I mean, it, it sold for well over $100. And uh, so there was like three belts there that day that all sold for really, really good money. The one had like silver uh, plating on the, the buckle. And I found out if it had been a little bit older that the buckle and the other hardware on the belt would have likely been uh, real silver. Um, so it was it was a really good find. And then I had one that was Crocodile uh, Meslon, um, and it sold, I think, for 45 or 50 bucks. So, you know, just, it, it got me to paying attention. And so I now pick up belts pretty regular. Um, even belts that don't have, you know, that type of resale value. I mean, if I'm only having to spend one to $3 for them, and it's a pretty it's a good size it's a really nice looking belt if it's the right brand you know like fossil fry um raffle or polo you know solid leather especially vintage does really well uh that have the solid brass buckles and hardware so i look for those and if let's say the price is right usually i can flip those for 15 to 20 sometimes 30 or 35 dollars and so I, i've been picking those up i got several listed and i've sold probably at this point you know eight or ten that's a relatively newer item that i've targeted i'm still learning about that that uh, uh particular category but there's definitely some money to be made there if the right ones pop up all right so the next item this is another clothing item so this is a snap-on polo made by elevate it's hard to really see it all very well but it's just like a gray and black. It's a fade. It fades from, from gray or silver gray pewter into black. It's got snap on written down the front of it or printed down the front. It's a really, uh, really nice looking polo shirt in great condition. I gave $6 for this particular shirt. Um, I was able to sell it for 22. So I thought that was a pretty good profit. And this probably wasn't listed more than, I don't think it was even listed a week, about three to four days. And this had already sold. Uh, also, it helped that it was a really good size. This was a 3XL. So, you know, being a very large size, that always helps about sales. There's not as many of those available. Moving on, I have a few more left. Uh, 
I got one here, a pair of shoes I'm going to grab. So this is a pair of Crocs. As most of you know, uh, Crocs do pretty well. Uh, these are called Shana. You'll notice they're kind of like a little Mary Jane. Now these are a small size. You know, sometimes uh, others will warn you about small sizes, you know, staying away from them, that they're not going to uh, do well. And, and, I, and I'll be honest, I, I realize that if these were, you know, something besides a size six, if they were an eight or a nine or a 10, I might've got two or three times the amount for them, but I only gave five bucks for these. And so I listed them, they sold in less than a week and uh, these sold for, let's see, uh, $25. So, I mean, you, you can't really go wrong with that. Um, I, I mean, I'd, I'd take a hundred pair, you know, if I'm going to be able to list them and spend $5, list them and sell them in, in a week or less and, and sell them for $25, that'd be awesome. I'd, I'd love to do that all day long, every day. So, I uh, wish I could find more of those. This next item is a pair of Fit Flops. Uh, if you're not familiar, Fit Flops is a good brand to look for. Uh, some of them sell for more than others, but they're, they're just good sell-through uh, a good bread and butter shoe item that uh, will will generally always move. It's not going to sit around a long time. These have probably been listed two to three weeks is all. And I'll give you a look at them. They're kind of got the sequins on the front. Just a basic black uh, uh, strap um, with the sequins. And, of course, the soles you see, the fit flop. Uh, let's see, I, I gave I gave five dollars for these and I sold these as well for twenty five getting kind of down to some of the better sales that I had um, This next item is a pair of blue jeans uh, If you don't know and I, I think a lot of you especially, you know, the seasoned resellers already know this It's all about the brands uh, it, The trendy brands the right brands they will always sell better sell faster and sell for more money You can have two items that cost the same in a retail store both considered to be really good brands, but one of them be just not as trendy. And when you get ready to try to list it on eBay, it's just hard to find a market for it. Uh, for instance, around here where I live, Wrangler jeans are really popular uh, with you know with your kids, your your you know your people that are involved in cattle and rodeo and just like that kind of cowboy style. But Wrangler jeans that sell for a few certain varieties are harder to sell. They're harder to sell than make a profit off of, for me anyway. Uh, maybe some of you know something I don't. If you do, please drop a comment and, and, and educate me some more on it. But Ariat, okay? Ariat is a brand that when you find this, you can pretty much bet if it's in just decent average condition or better, it's going to turn a profit if the price is low. And so I bought these blue jeans, and these were a good size too, these, these Ariat blue jeans. Let's see, they were a 32-34, so a longer length is a good thing. Uh, again, oddball, longer lengths in, in jeans, uh, larger sizes in, in shirts and clothes in general tend to sell easier. But uh, I gave $6 for these, which is more than I would probably normally pay a lot of times for some jeans, but gave 6 for these, and I sold them for 37 and they were listed for like a week and a half. You can't tell a lot about them in plastic but you know you get the point they're in pretty good shape good sale good profit this next item i picked this up last year okay i've had this i know for a year i, I guess what happened probably well maybe not quite a year i've had it almost a year it's a taika canvas jacket uh made very much along the lines of the material of carhartt but without the lining one of the things that sets taika jackets apart if you ever look those up tyca they have uh usually on the back a, a, an embossing so they've got something that's raised into the fabric um there's all kinds of designs from you know tigers and lines and, and landscapes this one is actually company advertising this is from campers and rvs called allegro uh, and actually a local company here to Alabama known as Tiffin Motorhomes. Uh, some of you may be familiar if you go back far enough in Alabama football history, again, Alabama, ching ching. Um, then one of the famous uh, kickers, if there's such a thing as a famous kicker, uh, was uh, Van Tiffin. And then later on, his son Lee Tiffin also uh, played for the University of Alabama. Both of them were excellent kickers. That's what this is. It's an Allegro Tiffin Motorhomes uh, a Taika jacket. It's made in the USA show you the tag here there's the the embroidery i think it was 6.99 though uh when i picked that up and i sold it for 50 bucks so uh, i did take an offer i'd had it listed for 75 and you know i'd gotten a little bit of interest i might could have held on to it up into closer to the fall and winter time and maybe got what i was asking but i was glad to see it move and, and i mean i think that's a good profit if i can take that 
that profit I made and go find three or four similar items and sell all of them for a similar price. I mean, before or buy uh, a Christmas instead of hanging on to this one item till Christmas just to get $20 more, then I think I've really made a smart decision. And that's the way I try to look at that. All right. This next item is a pair of shoes. This is one of the better sales again this weekend. Uh, this is a pair of Bass brand shoes. Now, Bass in general is not a Bolo brand. I mean, it's not one you ever really hear talked about when you watch videos. Uh, but if any of the resellers out there haven't discovered this or don't know this, uh, there's one particular style of Bass shoes, one particular uh, make of them called Weegens, that is a very, very good uh, uh bolo item and and so if you ever see weegens when you're out and i'll show you what this looks like get in the light where you can see it good do you see inside there it says weegens gh bass company now look bass is a great company they make great clothing great shoes uh, i'm not knocking the company at all I've, I've got some pants that i love that are made by them i've had some of their shoes before but this in, this item in particular is is a really really good item and so these these uh, particular shoes here are just penny loafers. They're kind of like that ox blood kind of color. Uh, and they're, guys, are basically brand new. You can tell they got this minor, like they might have been worn one time and they probably didn't like them. And there's your insignia again, the Weegens. You can see handcrafted genuine leather. So, anyhow, gave $5 for these. I know, $5. I don't know how, I mean, I was shocked. It was a local thrift shop. I, they don't price a lot of their items, man. You get up to the counter and, you know, something, sometimes you're expected to be two bucks and you get up there and they'll say it's $10. Uh, matter of fact, the last time I was in there, they just throw it in like a garbage bag. It's what they use to put your stuff in. And so I bought a good bit of items. But the last time I was in there, I, I didn't get as much as normal. And I had like one bag full. And it's like $47. And I was shocked. I mean, I couldn't believe how much it was. I was like a... I had went to put some stuff back that I changed my mind on. And when I got back to, up to the counter, they told me. And I asked him, I was like, well, so what What costs that so much this time? And so I had a couple of jackets. And one of them in particular, they charged $15 for. I was shocked. I mean, it, I was still would have gotten it. And I still still did get it. Uh, it was actually It's actually going to pay off pretty good, I think. But they didn't have no clue why it was worth $15. It was just a random item they decided to price up. They charged 15 for it, five for two others, and then everything else was normal price. But I've gone in there before and literally, literally get two garbage bags completely full and have like, I mean, anything from Carhartt, you know, overalls. I'm talking, you know, things that are normally priced up in a thrift shop and walk out with two bags, have like, you know, uh, uh, 30 or 40 items and spend like $70, you know, $60. And then that trip, man, $47, and I didn't have like half a bag full of stuff. I was just shocked. But it's okay. Um, I do really good there, and I appreciate having that place local. Um, and this is another example of a time when I did really good in there. So these charged me $5, and uh, I actually uh, sold these once already, and I, I'd made a mistake. Man, I hate when I do that. But uh, on the width, I had uh, you know used a sell similar and – and I forgot to change the width. It was listed as a B and these are a D width. And so I changed that once the return process got these back and actually sold them for $10 more than I did the first time. These sold for 65. I had taken an offer of 55 the first time. This time they sold for my full asking price, 64.99, 65 bucks. All right, so a great sale there. Let's do this one and then I'll get the big one out. I made a big buy uh, here a while back. It's not a huge buy, I guess, but you know, there were like 20 something, close to 30 GI Joes that were vintage uh, from the 80s, 90s, a couple from the 2000s. Most of them were 80s and 90s. Uh, they weren't in the best of condition. I mean, you know, they were used condition, uh, but some of them were better than others. Um, I'd have had some low ball offers. I had someone ask me what I would take, you know, and I was like, you know, well, I consider a hundred. I had them listed for 150 and I mean, I had went through, you can't really see them here. I'll try to pull up the pictures again and add them to the screen, but you see, I, I wrote out a label for every single one of them. I went ahead, I did the history, the date, all that stuff for every one that I had laid out and I had them laid out and pictured that way. So there was no mystery about what they were getting. They didn't have to try to figure it out from the photo. So this person had asked me, you know, what I take. I said, you know, well, I, I'd, I'd like to get as close to, I said, 120 as possible. And uh, 
they sent back a message and said that they didn't see more than 80 in their opinion in, in what I had laid out there. And they're probably, they may be right. Uh, they may have, you know, a vast knowledge of GI Joe's, but I know from solds that a lot this large of GI Joe's from that era will often sell for what I had it priced at. I sent back an offer to them at a hundred dollars, which was $20 less than what I had initially said and only $20 up from what they had said they felt like the estimate was. So I was kind of meeting in the middle. They sent back an offer of 50 bucks. I mean, I hate when people do that. It's like the most smart aleck move ever. And I just, just declined the offer. You know, I just said, forget it. I'm not going to deal with that. And so I let them set a, another week or two, and then I ended up lowering the price uh, down to one nineteen ninety nine to one hundred twenty bucks. And I've sent out some offers at like one hundred and ten or a hundred dollars. And then out of the blue, man, yesterday the, the ching ching goes off on the phone, and I look down, and they have sold for full asking price one hundred and twenty. I don't know about you. I sometimes have a lot of trouble trusting myself when I price items, even though I feel like I've priced them well, I've researched them well and I've got an accurate price, I really have a hard time trusting myself and being patient. I can't tell you how many times I've sent out offers and sent out offers trying to push for something to sell that I thought that maybe I had been too aggressive with uh, in pricing. And then, you know, nobody bought on the offer and all of a sudden out of the blue, it sells for full asking price. So I've got to work on that. When I price it competitively at the start, I need to work on giving it time. Uh, do you struggle with that? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one, but I, I seem to have a hard time with that. All right. Next item. So this next item is also our last. Oh, let me tell you this. I, I said I bought a lot. So I, I got the GI Joes. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm scattered a little bit. I got the GI Joes, but I also got this platform and I know the table's kind of a mess. Got everything going on right now. I had some stuff listed last night. I got things I need to clean up, but uh, but I got the, this platform that's from the 1980s as well as a couple of vehicles. Now look, they're not in great shape. But the thing about GI Joes and other things from this era, like these motors, for instance, you can part those off. You can take those off and sell them separate. Um, there's people that will buy just the shell for this boat. This is from 1986. Um, same thing with this, this uh, item here. I can pop those wheels off. I can pop the, the feet off. Anything that's removable. I've only got one of the guns, but the gun is still intact. This is sellable. So all these parts, the, the cage part that goes over this, that can be removed and sold. Um, and you'd be amazed like the, on the, the platform here, like this antenna can sell for as much as $20. This, this right here, the satellite dish, it comes off. And I think it sells for like 15. So all these are separate pieces. This, this ladder is separate. This platform here is separate. The stands that it sets on, these come loose. Okay, and they sell separate. So I'm gonna part all this out. And when I get, get this listed, I don't know what the total value is gonna be uh, for the listing, uh, but I would expect that I probably still have at least 100, if not 150 or more uh, dollars in value of stuff to list. Now I say that for this reason. When I bought this, I contacted someone on Facebook who had you know this big lot listed up and uh, they were asking like 150, they had marked it down to 120. And so I sent a message and said, is there any way you can do a hundred dollars? Uh, we were having to go uh, into town for a doctor's appointment uh, near where these people lived. And I, I knew I wouldn't have to drive a lot to pick it up. So I didn't have a lot of extra money invested in that. And uh, after a minute, they'd messaged back and said, uh, sure, well, I'll do that. And so, you know, selling the GI Joes for 120 uh, after fees and everything come out, I, I'm not going to be making a lot of money, but I do think on the GI Joes, I, I'll have my investment covered and maybe even a couple of dollars profit. And then when I get all this other stuff broken down, separated, sorted and listed and cleaned, I, I feel like I'm going to probably be a hundred dollars or better to the profit. So I should end up doubling my money, uh, which is a good investment in my opinion. I, I, and I love vintage toys. Um, I wasn't big on GI Joes. That wasn't really my thing when I was a kid. But looking back now, I mean, it's always around them. I had friends that had them. So I played with them. And and now, I mean, I'm fascinated by anything from that era. You know, I, I was born in 1980, grew up in the 80s and early 90s. And um, so any toys and stuff, of course, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Thundercats, uh, I mean, you know, you name it. I mean, anything from that period, I, I get pretty excited when the, when it comes around. All right, so this last item, this is the big one, Okay. So down here, right here on this shelf. So a very nice wood case. So I had no idea, you know, when I saw this, that it would have as much value as it does. 
This is a bochi ball set. I think I'm saying that right. If I'm not, you're welcome to laugh. And I, again, I'm not positive about pronunciations here, uh, but this is Obut, O-B-U-T, made in France. You'll notice these are chrome. Um, it is a complete set of six in this particular case. There's different size sets, uh, but they're all in really great condition. It, it was used, but it was not used a lot. This was at a local uh, thrift shop that's kind of run by a church. Uh, they, they raise money, of course, for the community and people in need. So I was in there shopping around and saw this. It was a new item they had set out. They get oddball stuff a lot of times like this because they have a lot of people from the area that, I, I mean, I think I don't think I'm stepping out too far that are, you know, maybe not rich, but, you know, more well-to-do than, than a lot of people living in Alabama. I looked this up, and I was a little bit taken aback. I was a little unsure, like, wait a minute. I saw where sometimes just two of the balls would sell for 50 bucks. I got to look in. I found a couple of sets that were similar. This is a vintage set. I, I realized that it was going to be a very easy sell for past $100. Now, I had it listed, I think, for 150 and I think I could have gotten that had I sat on it a long time. But folks, I, I listed this like three or four days ago. i have been holding on to it, kind of, you know, you, sometimes you get a really good item that you know is going to sell, but you, you know, you're a little bit apprehensive about, you know, listing it. You just want to save it for when you really need a good sale. But I listed this up and uh, listed it for 150 I sent out an offer. I had my first watcher within, you know, like two days. Um, you know, there's not a ton listed in a ton sold because it's kind of a unique item. Uh, but the sell through is well over 100%. So I had my first uh, watcher and I sent out an offer for 125 and they took it. And so I sold these for 125 spent 20 So I, I'll make, a, you know, at least 90 bucks on this. I thought that was a really good, uh, a really good find, a good sale and a good profit. So... There you go. Uh, watch out for bochi balls, especially if they're vintage and made of chrome and made in France. There's your good one. Obut, O-B-U-T. Uh, who knows? You may run across some, even if it's just uh, just a couple of, of loose ones. If they're in good shape, they can still resell for, you know, $25 or $30 sometimes a piece. Uh, definitely for, you know, 20 or more. Um, so that's it, guys. Uh, a pretty good haul today. I think all together that's 16 items that's going out. I'm pretty proud of this weekend. It's a, it's a big weekend for me, a big profit weekend. Um, the sales uh, that I've got uh, going out right now, this is over $425 in sales. Now, that's the that's the, the total. That's not the uh, amount that's going to be paid out. But still, uh, if I go in, that's probably about a $250 to $300 weekend for me. And and that's pretty good. So I'm, I'm excited about seeing the growth. Uh, stay with me as we push forward and, and, and do more. Uh, God bless you. God loves you. I'll be back again with another video in a couple of days. And uh, you guys have a great one.